So 93 hosted by your boy Stephen Pepper here to talk some sports. This episode is brought to you by no one. We have a short podcast episode today. First day back in school for your boy. I got multiple classes down in between some right now. So I'm kind of just adjusting to my class schedule right now. So I apologize for the short pod. I didn't want to not give you guys a podcast because there are some things from yesterday, NFL championship weekend that I want to address. So how is everyone doing? You know, of course, the Chiefs played the Ravens, and then the Lions played the 49ers. We've discussed my predictions on Friday's show. Let's see how they let's let's see how they um let's see how they panned out. Let's first start with the three o'clock game, the earlier one, the one in the AFC, the Chiefs and the Lions, uh, Chiefs and the Ravens. So, what did we say before the playoffs on this show? The guy under the most pressure, it was our consensus, was Lamar Jackson. Because Lamar Jackson needed to go on a deep postseason run this season because he hasn't been performing well in the postseason. But he's been so great in the regular season. But he's had disappointment after disappointment. This had to be his year, given he has a great coach, great offensive line has a receiver who's capable and the best defense in football. He needed to prove this year that he's not a playoff dropper. And then what did we say on Friday's show? That the Houston game was cute, but you were supposed to win that. What about a game when people are doubting that you could win? You're against Patrick Mahomes. Can you go win that game? Lamar had to win that game, and he didn't. I've never seen a quarterback in my lifetime be so great, so unguardable in the regular season, And then when it's time to ball out in a must-win game, shrink to a level that it's inexcusable. Let's face it. Lamar is a playoff dropper. 98 career passer rating in the regular season to 75.7 in the postseason. That's a 20-plus point drop. He completes 57% of his throws. and has a six passing touchdown to four inter... Sorry. He has six passing touchdowns for six interceptions in the playoffs. I do see that he gets a lot of yards, but in relation to a scoreboard, those are just empty calories because he can't put the ball in the end zone or convert on big third downs in big games. He has fallen now to two and four in the postseason when he's been the favorite in all but one of those games. And, it, and trust me, if it wasn't for that one half he had against the Texans, against a team he was supposed to beat by double digits, then these numbers would have been uglier. I mean, you should have seen these numbers before the Houston game. Like the passer rating, I think it was like in the 50s. It was, it was bad. The Houston game saved him. Was yesterday entirely his fault? No. Flowers fumbled in the end zone that... Could have changed the dynamic of the game. And to me, offensive coordinator Todd Mungin's game plan, especially in the first half, was extremely puzzling. But the game asked him, can a two-time MVP outshine Patrick Mahomes when his defense allowed zero points in the second half at home as the four-and-a-half point favorite? And Lamar came up small. 54% of his throws and a horrible, horrible red zone turnover. Lamar yesterday. How how can I put this man on the same tier as the best of the best? How? Even as a two-time MVP. Obviously, Mahomes is on a tier of his own. But say what you want about Allen not being able to get to a Super Bowl. His career playoff numbers, 21 passing touchdowns, four interceptions, and 100 passer rating. That's pretty good. And although Burrow isn't, to me, the playoff performer as Allen or Mahomes, Burrow throughout his career has shown, when given the opportunity, he can make the plays to get his team to a Super Bowl. And trust me, I am not one of those quarterbacky haters that doesn't like Lamar. I like Lamar. I've had my doubts when he came out in the draft, and I had my doubts in the past two seasons of his ability to stay healthy and work in the pocket. But I've always kind of rooted for him. He was a star quarterback, won a Heisman at Louisville. My mom went to Louisville. I watched all those games. I enjoy watching him. And I appreciated the strides he made as a pocket passer this year. And I thought this could be his year. Because if he just would have won this game, the conversation would have flipped. And we would be talking about Lamar Jackson in the same tier 
as Allen in Burrow, as some of the best quarterbacks in the league. But more MVPs and playoff wins when you're the number one seed is absolutely inexcusable. And what I noticed yesterday was that the Chiefs, although on the road for the first time in their dynasty during an AFC championship, looked like they looked like that was their house. They looked like they owned that building, whereas the Ravens didn't look like they belonged. And largely that was because of Lamar Jackson. Yeah, if Zay Flowers, you know, gets that touchdown, doesn't get that taunting, does the game change? Could the Ravens possibly win? If Todd Munkin wasn't just being a disaster and abandoning the run game against one of the worst rushing defenses in the league, could that game have been different? Probably. But the dynamic of the game, with those factors considered, as Lamar Jackson through the air, can you, and what most of his playoff games have asked him to do, can you, through the air, outshine the opposing quarterback and win this football game? when you are the favorite to win the game. And he did it. That's tough for Lamar. I've, I thought this was the year Lamar could shake the playoff dropper narrative. Thought he could, you know, ascend. We said on the previous shows to the elite of the best of the best with this playoff win. And, and unfortunately, fortunately, he didn't. Unfortunately, he didn't. And now he has to go back into next year. He's got to accept that MVP trophy in a cup in uh, in a week after a disappointing playoff loss. Okay, let's switch to the other game. Let's talk Lions 49ers. Listen, I want to say this because everyone's talking about him. I'm all for aggressiveness. I I I don't like these super conservative coaches. I love when teams get a little aggressive, get a little dicey. Hey, fourth and one. Not everyone has to tush push, but if you get creative, I saw the Ravens yesterday with Lamar Jackson, fourth and one on their own 25, went for it. It worked. I'm down to go for it many occasions. But just like aggressive driving, you have to be able to know when to take your foot off the gas or you're going to crash. And yesterday, the Lions crashed. I love Dan Campbell and his aggressiveness. I do. But when he went for it for two at the seven-yard line at Dallas and then went for two again, I had a feeling I had a feeling that he could cost the Lions the season. Not Goff, not the defense, he. And I was right. From inconsistent fourth down calls and using a timeout on the final drive, I was concerned. Like If I'm a Lions fan, I'd be concerned that situational football is a foreign concept to my head coach. Six points. Dan Campbell's decision-making left six points on the table. And the Lions lost by three. That's on the coach. I get his aggressiveness, you know, won his team games. But yesterday wasn't a regular season game in Detroit up seven against, like, Minnesota. He has to understand it was a road playoff game against the 49ers to win the right to go to the Super Bowl. This is. If you were going to point to where the game changed, it's obviously when the team was up 24 to 10 and Campbell decides to go for it instead of kicking the three points. And as a result, three points. The three points puts them up three scores and reclaims some of their momentum, but he goes for it and doesn't get it. And as a result, a 17 point lead collapsed right in front of his eyes. In eight minutes. And it's like, Campbell, what confused me was that he settled for three. Like, don't say like, oh, he and don't say that he does this every single time on fourth down because at the end of the half, he settled for three to go up three scores. So why didn't he do it there when he was at the goal line and chose to go for fourth down in a harder situation later in the game? And another gaffe, He's down three with seven minutes to go. And instead of kicking a field goal to tie the game, to ask the 49ers to go win it, he goes for it on fourth and three. That play call is baffling for every team, but it's especially bad for the Lions because they don't have the defense. If they don't get it, they don't have the defense to stop the momentum of that dynamic offense. 
And with that defense, if you don't get it, you risk going down 10, which for the Lions would be nearly impossible to come back from. And they lost. Like, who's telling, bro, this isn't Madden? These aggressive fourth down calls are franchise all three decisions. And the nail in the coffin to me was calling a run play on third and goal and forced to burn a timeout. I don't think the run play necessarily was the worst call in the world. But with every fourth down situation, you have to have a play that will work damn near 100% of the time. You have to have, if you're going to run it, you got to go huge. Why is Jamison Williamson now part of that? It's on Ben Johnson. Why is J-Mo blocking? He's small. He's the skinniest receiver they have. And part of the reason why they were to stop the run is because he couldn't pick up his block. And part of that's on Ben Johnson. But Campbell's the one who gives the thumbs up. And they didn't get the run, and they were forced to burn a timeout, which pretty much effectively lost the game because they weren't going to recover an onside kick in 2024. Listen, you guys know I don't like these type of head coaches. These coaches that don't call plays, that are just motivators on the sideline, the face of the staff. But what they do need and what that job requires is situational football. And that's something for that coach who doesn't call plays, he has to master understanding the situation and who, when to, what to green light and what to turn down. And I don't care, nerd, about analytics. Because analytics in a vacuum Always say that fourth and three or shorter, you go for it. Because I think the numbers say they have a higher than 50% chance of converting. Well, nerd. Analytics, like I said, are in a vacuum. They don't take into account the situation in the game. Where's that fourth and three? Or if it does, I think some, some analytics do, if you're some analytics do, the time of the game, the opponent they're playing. The defense that the team has, the larger risk, the situation, the scoreboard on the road, NFC championship, the right to go to a Super Bowl, that's not in the analytics. And Dan Campbell didn't understand that. And like I said, I like when teams get aggressive. I'm not for these super conservative coaches. But if you're going to go for it, you have to understand, A, when to pump the brakes, and B, you have to have the most perfect play imaginable. And against the in the wild card round against the Rams, they got a little risky and threw tights the game to Amara St. Brown. But Amara St. Brown said after the game, that's a route. That's a that's a snap. With him, golf, the team had been working on all season. You can't just throw out a random play, random concept. It's got to be a play that you know will work. And if it doesn't work, then you have to be willing to take the risk. And the Lions were in no position yesterday in a defense that couldn't stop a pebble in the second half to fail on fourth down. You can't leave points on the table with that defense against that team. And Dan Campbell has been doing that all season. They've been getting away with it against the Vikings and week three, one o'clock slate on CBS or Fox and no one's watching or that game doesn't have nearly as much stakes. But that feeling that I got at the Dallas game when he went for it twice one was at the seven-yard line that he couldn't turn off his aggressiveness, take the foot off the gas. I knew not Goff, not Jameson Will, not Jameer Gibbs, not the defense, that he was going to lose the Lions this season. Listen, Goff, Jameer Gibbs, um, the defense, they're all to blame yesterday as well. But we all knew coming in the game, Goff, you pressure him, second half, big game, he can get tight. And he did. Jameer Gibbs. Hell of a player, but he's a rookie, and he fumbled, which also helped hurt the momentum. CMC's never fumbling, and the defense gave up a lot of points in the second half. Couldn't get a stop to save their lives. But we all knew the defense was bad. So a lot of the reasons why they lost were reasons that we knew coming in. Dan Campbell, if he just would have cleaned up his aggressiveness and acted like his kicker didn't tear his hamstring and sent him out to kick six points, they didn't win the game, no matter what Goff did, no matter what Jameer Gibbs did, no matter what the defense did. This overcoaching, overaggressiveness, I saw Brandon Staley do it and cost the Chargers many games, cost them the playoffs in 2021. These overaggressive head coaches need to learn when to take the foot off the gas. And Dan Campbell, unfortunately, Lions fans, costed your team 
it would be brutal that in five years, 10 years from now, when this Lions team no longer exists, that we look back and say, that was their shot. And Dan Campbell might have to live with that. But I appreciate everyone for tuning in to Some Casual Takes number 93 short show as I'm in between classes. Just wanted to give you all these quick takes. Let me let me not forget the music. Let me not forget the music. Just give me those quick takes before I'm in between classes. How's everyone who's listening? How's your classes going? Um, next show will probably be Friday, but you never know. Just in case, follow the channel, follow the Twitch, follow the YouTube, follow the TikTok. Some Casual Takes is a handle for everything. Turn on notifications just in case I randomly go live like I did today. And until next show, see ya.